My name is Graham Hamilton. I'm a foot and ankle surgeon from San Marcos, Texas. Today we're going to talk about mid-substance Achilles tendon repair with the MyTech knotless anchor system. Achilles ruptures occur in approximately one out of every 10,000 people in North America. When they do happen, 75% occur in the mid-substance of the tendon. The surgical goal, regardless of approach, is to restore physiologic length and tension to the tendon and maintain it through the healing process. How to best perform this is surgeon dependent, but biomechanical studies have shown far greater strength and stability with repair using bone anchors than using only suture. I've marked the edges of the tendon. I've also marked the edges essentially of the attachment of the Achilles tendon in the posterior aspect of the calcaneus. With the mid-substance ruptures, where the majority of them will occur within the midpoint of the tendon, there is generally a palpable dimple or dell within the zone of injury. What I will typically do is mark the most superior portion of the dell and make a small midline incision extending approximately two to three centimeters. I go ahead and make an incision in the midline of the tendon and the proximal end and potential distal end of the Achilles can clearly be visualized. With the peritene on reflected, one can clearly see the zone of injury and the rupture site that I'm demonstrating here. The proximal end of the tendon has some fraying to it, as does the distal end, and the two can be reapproximated clinically. At this stage, the surgeon will place a whip stitch in the proximal aspect of the tendon so it can be retrieved within the wound. With the whip stitch placed, one can clearly see that the proximal end can be delivered into the wound for further suture placement, as I'm demonstrating here. I prefer to utilize multiple suture strands so that I can make my hair as robust as possible early functional rehabilitation. So with tensioning on the whip stitch, I will place sutures extending more proximally up the more healthier portion of the tendon site. As a general rule, I will utilize up to three to four strands of number two suture for a very, very robust construct. I will separate out the limbs of suture, so I have four on each side. You can see that the fixation looks very, very stable. There's no signs of any pullout, and I feel very comfortable with that repair. With the proximal end secure in two safe zones, I will make some stab incisions to the level of the posterior aspect of the heel. I like to make my incision just lateral to the insertion of the tendo Achilles directly down to bone. The incisions are approximately a centimeter and a half in length. The instrument is inserted into the wound and delivered into the mid-substance of the Achilles tendon and allowed to extend proximally into the wound. And it should be exiting in the midpoint of the Achilles tendon and the four limbs can be passed through the eyelet. It's imperative that the surgeon hold the nitinol wire stable as the suture is delivered distally. The process is repeated on the other side. Make sure that one hand is placed on the nitinol loop and the sutures can be delivered distally. With the suture delivered distally, one can clearly see as the suture strands are pulled that the two ends of the tendon reapproximate. A drill sleeve is placed and a pilot hole is then made for the purpose of the bone anchor. With this system, it has a nice hard stop so the surgeon does not have to gauge depth. What I like to do when I perform the pilot hole is I'll mark my hole with a wire so that this can be easily identified and the anchor inserted. The same process is performed on the other side. Appropriate depth is achieved. 
At this stage, the limbs of suture are inserted into the anchor system with the strands incarcerated. They're pulled approximately through the anchor. The same step is performed on the other strands of suture. At this stage, the anchors are then inserted into the pilot holes. We can remove the temporary wires and insert the stems into the pilot holes as is demonstrated here. And they can be pushed flush with the bone. In certain instances, one has to use a mallet to place the anchor to the level of the surface of the bone. At this stage, it's important that both bone anchors are stabilized. You will have to potentially utilize an assistant for this portion of the operation. And the strands of suture can then be individually tensioned to close up the tendon gap as is demonstrated here. I like to perform this sequentially, pulling on one strand at a time. And with this, you can notice that the strands of suture will start to come together and close up the tendon gap. The device also has precise laser markings to ensure that the correct depth is achieved. The delivery system is removed and the tails of the suture are trimmed flush with the bone. This is a knotless system. There's no need for further anchoring within the posterior aspect of the heel. At this point, one can clearly see that the tendon has been reapproximated to normal physiologic tension with a minimal surgical footprint and excellent stability has been achieved. After the repair, the wound is closed in layers. I will reapproximate the peritenon and use some simple interrupted sutures as you can see here. Clearly a very small surgical footprint which should allow for more rapid healing and faster rehabilitation. Here is my post-operative protocol. My name is Graham Hamilton. Thank you for watching.